If you're getting small pimple bumps around the mouth, nose, or eyes, that could be a sign of something called perioral dermatitis. I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board-certified dermatologist and acne and rosacea expert at Harvard Medical School. In this video, I want to discuss perioral dermatitis. How do we identify it? How do we separate it from things like acne and rosacea? What causes it? And then how do we treat it? When it comes to figuring out if this is perioral dermatitis, we want to look for having small pimple bumps around the mouth, sometimes nose or eyes. And importantly, if we see things like whiteheads or blackheads, that could be a sign that this is actually acne. And if we see a lot of redness or flushing or broken blood vessels called glandiectasias, that could be a sign that this is actually rosacea. But if we just see these pimple bumps, often around the mouth, nose, and eyes, they typically don't affect right at the border of these areas. There's a little area of sparing between the eyes, nose, and mouth, and the bumps. That can really be a strong sign of perioral dermatitis. So what causes perioral dermatitis? Well, the bottom line is we really don't know. Perioral dermatitis is most common in kids and young adult women. So there have been some thoughts about could viruses potentially play a role in triggering perioral dermatitis. There's a lot of overlap with perioral dermatitis and rosacea. So some have wondered whether a microbiome or skin good and bad bacteria might play a role in perioral dermatitis. In addition, sometimes we see perioral dermatitis in the setting of changes to birth control pills or other hormonal contraception. And an important trigger that we often see with perioral dermatitis is steroid exposure. So whether it's topical steroids being used on the skin, whether it's inhaled steroids for asthma or a pill, systemic steroids, these can all be potential drivers of perioral dermatitis. Now, when it comes to treating perioral dermatitis, of course, the first step is trying to avoid any of those triggers. So if there's steroid exposure that's driving, I'm trying to take that away. But another important aspect of caring for people with perioral dermatitis is trying to simplify a skincare regimen. Often people with perioral dermatitis are using a lot of different products. And a first step, and this is something really anyone can do at home, is to just simplify the skincare regimen. Get rid of everything with fragrances, try to get rid of products that might be irritating, just simplify things. So gentle cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, and that's it. And even honestly, less than that potentially. When it comes to picking products, you wanna look for things that have minimal ingredients, no fragrances, try to avoid preservatives. Things like Vanna Cream often makes a lot of products like this. So when it comes to picking a moisturizer, something like Vanna Cream, or even something really basic like Vaseline or Aquaphor, can be a good way to approach that aspect of the skincare regimen. And then from sunscreens, we wanna avoid sunscreens with chemical filters and really use mineral sunscreens. And we have a whole video about sunscreens if you wanna look more into that. Now, unfortunately, some patients just don't get better with avoiding triggers and some of these simple at-home skincare routine modifications, and they need prescription treatments from a doctor. And these treatments fall into a few categories. They fall into non-steroidal anti-inflammatory treatments, topical antimicrobial, topical antibiotic treatments, and oral antibiotic pills. When it comes to the first set of treatments, these topical anti-inflammatory treatments that aren't a steroid, pomecrolimus or tacrolimus are often treatments that are used to treat perioral dermatitis. In addition, sometimes we'll combine these with a treatment that can address the microbiome or skin good and bad bacteria like metronidazole or clindamycin or even sometimes ivermectin. And then finally, for more severe perioral dermatitis or for people who are looking to get better faster, we might consider an oral antibiotic like doxycycline. Now, fortunately, when it comes to perioral dermatitis, most people will get better even sometimes on their own within a couple of months. So the long-term outlook is very good, even without treatment. But there are some people whose perioral dermatitis is more persistent and does require more chronic treatment. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please pop the like button and consider subscribing to this channel so that we can share the video with more people. In addition, ask me your questions about acne and rosacea in the comments below. Thank you again for watching. See ya.